Welcome to another episode of Ask Better Questions. In today's episode, we'll be covering a series of questions including what is AI good for? What can it currently be used for? How can it be best harnessed? And lastly, we'll be touching on some of the drawbacks and limitations. But before we get into the episode, I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Colorful Solutions. Full disclosure, I am a director at Colorful Solutions and we are the people to speak to if you're looking for independent advice on AI implementations. If you are in the marketplace to automate or implement AI in any of your business's processes, please be sure to reach out. Links are in the description. So, what is AI good for? It turns out quite a lot, actually. As we've discussed on previous episodes, AI can manage large data sets and work with people to identify areas for improvement and focus. So the opportunities for compliance and business process optimization are still being explored. This is developing day by day and every day new things come to light. Uh, new software is launched, um, predominantly fitting into a few categories that we'll cover shortly. The age we're approaching now is like a hybrid model. I like to refer to it as I. Much like in chess, development happened in three phases. We've had chess for centuries. Computers were a novel idea, but beaten regularly by human beings in the first stage. In the second stage, computers became more dominant, but human players playing with the assistance of AI were able to regularly beat computers on their own. And now finally, we're in a final stage where computers are basically all but unbeatable. Um, in order to beat a computer, you need to have a more powerful computer. Um, I like to think of the, of the stage that we're in with AI now as the hybrid stage, and we're entering the hybrid stage with AI rookie chess players where they're going to suffer unless they learn how to harness playing with the computer. Just as businesses don't like utilizing AI, they, they're going to suffer against those that do. So how is AI being used? Well, here's an inexhaustible list. Uh, so AI, AI enabled products or services. So these things fall under the categories like Alexa or Siri, or even app powered AI like Replica or Bing Search. These sorts of products are principally AI. We're selling AI as a service. Alexa, book me XYZ and book me a doctor's appointment and it will call out and make the doctor's appointment, put it in your calendar, all sorts of things, but it will do that intelligently. These are things that are great services, but predominantly they are for a select group of tech startups or tech businesses that have built their entire business around these products. Um, there's also automating routine cognitive work. So AI has long since moved from just automating data entry to summarizing reports and drafting communications and various other things. So I know several AI systems that will create detailed meeting minutes and circulate them at the end of a meeting. And this technology is available right now. And you can subscribe to these things. You can purchase them outright. And there are various drawbacks to this, but these systems already exist. Then you've got number three, AI for assisting work. Now, how does it do that? Much like the hybrid model above, uh, technology like Grammarly is an obvious example, but there are other software AI systems currently being deployed in some businesses that will assist employees in their particular sales process, in addition to compliance and other requirements. So the AI will offer reminders, hints, suggestions where the AI notes that help could be needed or you don't want to miss XYZ compliance requirement. Uh, and these things will help employees do their jobs better. And that's principally what they're trying to do. Then there's AI for training work. So AI tools now exist to assess and uh, assess and assist employees to learn faster and retain information better. So AI can customize learning plans to employees uh, with a variety of business inputs, including things like experience level, knowledge, and learning preferences. Um, then there's uh, AI for monitoring safety and coaching. So some businesses have begun to deploy monitoring systems to monitor and analyze employee behavior. Now, I for one don't advocate or argue against such technology. However, in some instances, this can improve safety such as when transport companies utilize AI systems to monitor drivers' eye movements to detect fatigue. Now, these systems urge drivers to take breaks and continue to monitor them throughout shift. 
it does feel invasive and I do feel for the employees. However, this is something that has prevented what could be terrible accidents. Uh, local police forces in the UK have long utilised CCTV systems to detect unwanted behaviours before they developed into larger problems, and this has started to become prolific around the world. So we've seen it in the UK, we've of course seen it in China, we're now seeing it in other parts of the US. Um, but then you've got AI as a creative force. So AI is capable of creating compositional works, so large language models are great or works such as um, poetry or computer code or prose in many forms, so books, reports, blog posts, etc. But then you've also got things that AI can do such as music and of course visual art, um, both still and moving pictures. Then you've got AI's particular um, ability to access and organize knowledge. So using CRM software, software is passe in this day and age. Uh, databases, customers and business information are prolific across organizations. So AI is uniquely equipped to assess large volumes of data, understand it and answer very specific questions to assist in high level decisions. But also on a granular. So AI can tell you what, a, what customer sentiment is, but it can also tell you what a particular customer sentiment is and where it's headed. So AI for data processing optimization. So AI applications can use algorithms and modeling to turn data into actionable insights and can optimize a, a range of functions and processes for employee schedules to production planning, inventory management. And these things will basically end up optimizing the outputs of a business. You've also got AI for decision to support. So decision support, um, the next logical leap, I suppose, from AI creating reports from large data sets is to then have the AI offer insights over those reports. So systems of this nature are called DSS or decision support systems and are currently being used by people such as doctors, accountants, and researchers. Doctors, obviously, decision support systems have, have existed for a while, both digital and non-digital, in the diagnosis of patients. Uh, accountants decision support systems have, have been utilized in anything from tax work to auditing. Um, and researchers decision support systems are really useful for figuring out what's next in terms of what experiments to do, what the expected outcomes would be, and um, what things to try next. Now AI enabled quality control and assurance. I've worked a lot um, in my past with manufacturers and um, having had machine vision used in many manufacturing systems for decades, AI developers are currently developing improvements to integrate quality control and allowing AI decisions on the fly to improve, not just flag quality concerns. So anyone that's used machine vision before knows it will spot quality concerns and it will flag them for an operator to then do something about. Um, the AI is now stepping into the operator's shoes and deciding what to do in order to improve the outputs. Now that brings me to the last one on our list, which is AI for personalized customer service experience and support. So AI allows businesses to identify single customers and target them directly with discounts, offers, and tailored experiences. This is a logical leap for customers who regularly shop online to now customers entering your store. So AI is able to work across a large number of platforms in the store, online, um, in chatbots, even over the phone. So um, where you can find customer details, you can then use AI to offer additional uh, experience and support. So as you can see from my list above, the opportunities are endless. The question to be answered now is, what do we do? What do we want to automate? Where do we go from here? Before we do any of that, we need to be aware of the risks. Now, AI, AI's most obvious risk is that it's been demonstrated and it has a history of inventing facts. Uh, most notably, there was a court case that was entirely, a court filing entirely written by AI that two lawyers uh, filed up to a judge and it, all, it was basically a PR exercise, and then they found out that the AI had cited cases that it had just invented. 
So the court was, the, the case was dismissed because the AI had completely shot the pooch. Um, this is something that we really, really need to avoid. Um, if you've got a history of inventing facts, this can be disastrous when you're making business decisions based on AI. It can be even worse when AI is making those decisions for, on invented data. The obvious, at least initial solution to, is to monitor any AI system that is in. This should be part of any AI project implementation, and this will impact bottom line savings, but it's prudent and best practice, and proper monitoring will prevent many of the worst case scenarios and will last long term. So ultimately, when you do choose to implement an AI in-house, uh, be sure to get the very best advice. And the very best advice you can get from people who are experienced and not invested in selling you something. So generally, third-party advice, not necessarily from the person who's selling you the AI product. So that about wraps it up for today's podcast. There was a quick one. So... If you have questions or comments, please reach out to us in the links in the description. If you like the podcast, leave a rating and review and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Now, I'm Peter Adams, and I'll be here next week to ask better questions. <laughs>